Okay, in this second video, I just want to re-emphasize the testing strategies I talked about in class. Um, it might be good as you go through the test to mark each problem as easy, medium, or hard, uh, and then save all of the hard problems for the very end. So you mark the question as you go. Be sure to take breaks every hour. Just go get water, ask to use the bathroom. Um, walk around and let yourself think. Save the problems you personally find most difficult until the end, and then use whatever strategies you can think of. Uh, checking your work, using your calculator in different ways, uh, writing out a table, drawing a picture, plugging in answer choices. Use any and every strategy you can think of to get the answer correct. Um, and take your time. There isn't any reason to be the first one to be finished. Okay, so uh, these are examples of what you might consider difficulty levels uh, and why. I would consider mean absolute devi deviation medium to hard difficulty uh, because one, you've got to remember the strategy of finding the average and then the difference from the average and then the average of that difference. But even if you remember the strategy, uh, you've got to, there's so many, there's a lot of room for error in this type of problem. Um, so you don't want to get stuck there. Uh, I'd consider this one an easy problem uh, because if you read the problem and take time to read each problem before you decide this and look at the pattern 70, 70, 90, 90, 110, 110. It stands to reason that this would be 75, 75, so x is 75. So it doesn't take much inspection to get that one correct. This would be another easy problem. Within 15 seconds or less, you will probably have a good idea what the correct answer is here. Which one suggests a linear relationship? The one where the line, the dots are all in a straight line. Um, so for me, this would be an easy problem because it doesn't take much effort, just sort of recognition of what you're being asked for. Uh, this one, Pythagorean theorem and missing leg, I would call that a medium, maybe medium to hard difficulty because you've got to pick the right strategy. And then you've got to remember that the Pythagorean theorem comes in two different varieties uh, and that this is the appropriate version of the, the formula. Uh, and then you've got to remember to take the square root at the end. Um, so it takes more effort to get the correct answer. Um, so I would probably class that as a medium problem. And it's, you know, it's personal what you choose. Um, this one I would probably class as a difficult problem because you see it and you get intimidated or afraid. Now maybe we practice it so much that it won't be an issue. But certainly as you were doing the star ready and as we were solving problems together in class, this one gave lots of students lots of difficulty. So you don't want to get to this problem or a problem like it and stay stuck for 15 minutes. If you know it's going to be hard to solve, mark it and then move on to the next one. This is one I would call an easy problem because it doesn't take too long. Assuming you know the solution to both equations is the intersection point, then you just go pick the ordered pair that matches and probably finished within a minute. Uh, be sure, of course, you don't get caught by the distraction there. Um, this is another one that I would probably class as an easy problem because you just, you know, look for, you once you realize you're looking for the y-intercept, that's just a matter of reading it right off the graph and then bubbling it in. It doesn't take too much effort or computation. And, um, Let's see, I would call this one probably a medium to hard difficulty. Um, on the one hand, it's just the volume of a cone. But on the other hand, they gave you values in mixed number. And then they gave you the diameter instead of the radius. Uh, and then it's a cone, so it's got this one third as part of the formula. Um, and so there's, there's lots of opportunity to make mistakes along the way, even if you recognize the correct strategy. Um, and you can compare that problem oh, shoot. Well, what I put it under there we go. Uh, compare that problem maybe to this problem. Uh, where it's very much the same content or the same type of problem. It's volume, 
but this time it's volume of the cylinder, so you don't have a one-third. And even though they gave you the dia diameter, they gave you whole numbers, so it's, a, it's an easier version of a volume problem uh, and might not make as much uh, prove to be as difficult. Uh, and then you have problems like this one, where even me, your teacher, gets a headache when he looks at it. Um, you know, you don't want to come across something like this on the test and spend 30 minutes looking at it staying stuck. So if you come across something that you're just you're working on and you know you're not going to get it within five or six minutes or three or four minutes even, okay, fine. Mark it, move on to the next problem and come back and do it at the very end of the test. Um, so at this point I realize it's completely out of my hands. Uh, I do think that you guys have done great work and that you're going to succeed and uh, be sure you get a good night's sleep, eat breakfast, and I wish you the best of luck tomorrow.